Hello guys and welcome back to another satisfactory guide and this time because so many new players have joined the game recently I thought we should go back to the basics and create a really simple 100% efficient coal power setup so that the new community members aren't stuck in limbo harvesting biomass for generators for the rest of their lives. So starting off, I'll show you the bare minimum to build this setup so that you can start producing power right away. And then we'll look at how we can actually make this build aesthetically pleasing. I'll also tell you about the coal generators and what you can expect at this point in the game as well. So if you do find this video helpful, why not help me out by hitting a like? And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you're interested in our copyright free music, check the link to my Spotify list below. So let's get into it. Now, coal power is the first tier 3 milestone unlock which is available having sent off the first level of the space elevator parts. As soon as coal power is available you can start to fully automate your factory which makes it really important to get right. And we do this by getting the coal miners being run by the power plants that they're going to be supplying once the system has been kickstarted by those biofuel generators. Now one thing to bear in mind is that these generators require 45 water and 15 coal per minute to run, so in order to make an efficient setup we'll want to balance these resources. So for those of you who just want to know the numbers so that you can create your own beautiful designs, the first thing you want to think about is that you can run one water extractor, which is overclocked to 150%, alongside a single Mark 1 line that's 60 coal to 4 power generators. Now this will produce 300 power, however remember if you are using overclocking which is used with the power slugs and turning them into power cells, then it does actually use exponentially more power. So this water extractor with a 150% overclock uses a total of just over 38 power. However, two water extractors that are underclocked to 75% only consume 25.2 megawatts. It's something to bear in mind. Now this setup uses a simple manifold for the coal as well as a manifold pipe for the water. However, things do get a little bit more complicated if you want to do a Mark II line of 120 coal because this requires 360 water, which is the equivalent of three water extractors to eight coal generators. The problem here is that the max pipeline capacity at this tier is 300. So in order to counter this, we need to line our eight generators up and then run one water extractor between the fourth and fifth generator into a pipeline manifold that spreads out or outwards to the other generators. And then we will then add another extractor either side of the manifold so that they close off the circuit. This should balance out the water within one pipeline as the generators should be consuming the water so that no section of the pipe is ever oversaturated. But you may notice that the generators start on and off. Now this is due to water backflow across the network. So in order to stop this, you may actually need to place upside down U's between the second and third and sixth and seventh pipeline junctions. Or alternatively, you could wait to unlock valves. What this does is forces water over the U uh, or upside down U into the next section only if the pipes are at full capacity and this should leave the power plants running efficiently. Now running this setup does cost 65 power for the water and the coal extractor if you're on a pure node and provides you with 600 power, which isn't bad for the early game. So next thing to do is let's make this look a little prettier. Now though I'll be using eight generators, I'll only be using two water extractors and both of these are going to be overclocked to 150% and will be provided with the 120 coal per minute on a Mark II conveyor line. 
Now, because we are going to be making things more aesthetically pleasing, we are going to go over to the awesome shop and we're going to be purchasing a few items. Now, by all means, you do not need to follow me. You can choose to add more things. You can choose to add less. But things that I would recommend from the get go for this build specifically are the fix it roofs along with the concrete pillars. Then, if we go to walls, we'll take the windowed walls, which are unlocked by researching the silicon and crystal quartz in the map uh, we will also take the ramp wall bundle and the inverted ramps and then we will go over to the attachments here on the attachments i'm going to be using the conveyor floor holes as well as the pipeline floor holes and should you wish uh, though i'm not using it we'll take it anyway uh, you can use the wall power outlets just to give you a neater power organization we're not going to need anything in the foundations, but when we go over to the customizer, you will want to unlock the concrete wall if you're going for the exact same design that I'm doing currently. And in all, this is going to cost 28 fix it coupons. Now this can be generated relatively quick in game. If you have any questions about how you can generate this within the first few hours of gameplay, then do check out my guide. I'll put a link to that in the top right now. So in order to build this generator, the first thing that we're going to do is create a, a little grid to work from of foundations. We're going to want to go 10 across as well as five deep. I should also mention that I am in creative mode for this for the ease of the tutorial. I've done this through the pack utility mod and we're going to want to fill this in. Now the next thing that we're going to do is grab the foundations, the four meter ones, and we're going to place this on top uh, in fact, we only need to place one here and then we're going to place another one meter foundation on top. And from here, we're going to fill out the back four lines, which are four by 10 with the one meter foundations. Now, at this point, we're going to delete these two foundations that we placed and we're going to run a concrete wall across the center here. We're also going to do this across the bottom as well. This gives it a nice little border for us to work from. Now, at this point, we're going to place a foundation line for where we want our extractors or our uh, our water or our coal to enter. So this is where our extractors would be. And also we'd have the coal running along here. From this point, we're going to grab our coal generators and we're going to place them in line flush against the end. And all we want is the little inputs that you have here just over this seam. So we're going to run these all across. And you can see, can see once you get to the end, it's running pretty flush against the end too. From here, we are going to place down some of the Pipeline floor holes, these are going to be placed not this section, but one further away. And we're going to do this all the way along. And once done, we're then going to grab the conveyor elevator holes and we're going to place them just in front of the coal entrance or input like so. At this point, we want to connect the inputs with those holes. So we're going to use the noodle in order to connect these up. If we do it with anything else, you'll notice that we struggle. So for this, remember to hold down R. And then the next thing that we're going to do is grab some Mark 1 elevators. And we're going to connect not from the input on the coal generator, but from the elevator. This gives it a nice snug it like so. At this point, we're going to worry about the inputs for these generators. We're going to have the coal going along this third of the foundation here. It's actually going to be above by one level. And so what we do is if we grab our splitter, you can see that this one is just before the crease we're going to bring it up to here then up a second level 
and you'll notice how it is not showing through here. So it is clipping the roof, but we can then bring a Mark II line across to here. We select Mark II. And what we can also do is grab this. And if we click it into the uh, from the elevator hole and then rotate it to the splitter, you'll notice how it rises up. So this is going to be extra tight, but it means that we also have plenty of room underneath for running our pipelines. And that's what we're going to do next. So we want this one to go all the way to the end. We're just going to follow this seam. It's not going to interrupt at all with this line here till it reaches the very end. Okay, so we'll leave that there for now. You can see this one's going to run to here. Then we will bring it across to there. And this one will run all the way along to here. The, is it the middle? No, it's this uh, central line here. Not the center, but the, the offset center line. Now, the way that we're going to run this is all the way across. We're going to follow this one all the way along. This is really important for the next step. So if we go all the way along here, we'll place a line here. We will bring this all the way across to the end, let's say there. Now at this point, we're going to grab our junctions and we're going to place them just in line with these um, pipeline holes, floor holes. And we're going to then connect all of these up. Now, once all of these pipeline floor holes have been connected with this manifold pipeline, we're going to grab the other end and we're just going to bring it around to this side so we can bring it nicely around and complete the circuit. If you wanted to use three separate generators, you would have to have one connected here, one connected on this end, and then also one in the middle of the fourth and fifth, um, which is here. Um, I don't do this because it's not going to look that great with a, a splitter here. I suppose you could place it here. The next thing that I want to do is connect all of this manifold up which is going to run along the side of the wall. Now, one thing we do need to make sure while we're doing this is to make sure that when we're placing this elevator that we are, have got this up line. You see this little faint green up line? We want that. We do not want to have that because you can see the actual up line is, if we place this actually, and go up here and you'll see that it's poking out. We do not want this. Our coal will not be going into our coal generators. So just make sure that when you're placing that, that you are getting that little up arrow as you're placing into the elevator and then rotate it into the uh, splitter. Again, green arrow, splitter. And to give you an idea of what this looks like, if we just remove this, hopefully it's not going to cause a problem. We'll leave that one at the end. You can see that we now have two extractors, one on the far end and the other one connected to this line. And then we have our manifold of coal feeding into the power generators, as well as the other water manifold. Now, I know I didn't say you needed the glass um, foundations here. I've just chosen them because I had them available and they look good, but any normal foundations will do. Before we continue on, the next thing that we need to do is just trial the actual generators, make sure that they're going to run effectively. And one thing to bear in mind is because it is a manifold, it's going to prioritize the first uh, generators in the splitter manifold. First. So these are going to be the last ones to turn on. The next thing that we're going to do is if we grab this wall and we're going to grab the normal metal ones, we're going to run this all the way through the bottom. And then I think the next thing that we want to do is add some glass walls. Now we don't want to add too much because it can look a little bit over the top. 
So it's really about finding the balance for your style. Yeah, I quite like the look of this so far. We're also going to add a roof. You don't really need to worry about this too much for the time being. I'm just going to do the front line here. We're just going to go with this build for me. I think we're going to go with a flat roof, but by all means, do use a peaked roof if you want. We're going to remove that. And you can see how we've got this little gutter along the front, which I think looks really nice. Next, we're going to do the same along the sides. And I tend to do some patterns with the walls, these uh, triangular pieces. Um, so what we'll do with that is we're going to just run that across the side. We'll do the same here. We're also going to make sure that we have this uh, one meter wall along there as well. At this point, we're going to start playing around with these ramp pieces. So in order to create a cool looking shape, we're going to run up with that piece and then we're going to select some inverted ones. You can see how these clip through the windows and look really cool. We're also going to do the same up here. And I think maybe for this one, we'll do a slower um, decline. Is that what it's called? It's not an incline. It's a, a decline, right? Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And if you want, you could also do, say, for example, use this one over here. It really depends what kind of uh, style you're going for, but I, th I think that's pretty cool. So here you go, I've repeated it on the other side as well, but by all means, please do experiment. People ask me how I come up with these ideas for builds, and it really is just down to experimentation. There's no master plan. We're now going to complete the roof, and we're also going to go around the back as well, and I think we're just going to... We'll run this as a coal, uh, a concrete even. And I think we'll, we'll do the same just above, actually. We will break this up with this single wall. We'll do the same below. Then we're also going to run the glass all the way along here. Okay, it's something relatively simple. And what we are now going to do, I'm going to actually cover us in with a roof. And once done, your factory roof will look something like this. So if you've unlocked the power joints, can, oh, look at this. We can actually do it on the outside. Interesting. So because we can do it on the outside, I think we'll run it to the middle, connect, and run this across to the middle of that over the yes it is it's just over and before we connect all of these up the next thing that i'm going to do if you've unlocked this uh it is available in tier it's tier four the mark three logistics i might be mistaken but you can unlock the power storage and this is something that's nice to have you're going to be producing quite a lot of excess energy from the get-go in this game with the coal generators. So if you're able to, you might as well build some of these behind. You can daisy chain these to connect with one another. And then just connect with one of these on the end, should you wish. There you go, a little 100% efficient coal power plant that you can build pretty much from the get-go within the first five to ten hours in game so there you are guys if you did find it helpful by all means please do drop a like it really will help the video and if you want to see more don't forget to subscribe and don't forget we're jumping over to twitch immediately after this video so if you do want to join us and are in the premiere jump on over to twitch.tv forward slash total eclipse for some more satisfactory fun. Anyway, guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to our amazing supporters, most notably our Solo Eclipse patrons, The Calamity, Cerebral Tag and James Irwin, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Dixie Chris and Lord of July, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.